I'm going to take you back to your childhood for a moment. Imagine, you're at a sandbox in a local playground playing tractors with your friend, and you both want specific areas of the sandbox to play in, but can't come to any agreements of how to divide it up. The argument escalates and turns into a full-blown playground rumble. Suddenly, a stranger appears. He places himself between you and your former friend. He gets agreement from both of you that the sandbox should be divided up equally and stays to make sure you play in peace. Peacekeeping is very similar in this respect. It isn't always about who is right or who is wrong. Because sometimes, like children, there is no defined good or bad side. It is just an argument that requires separation, mediation, and negotiation. Good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, dignitaries, judges, and fellow cadets. I am here to inform you today about Canada's changing role as peacekeepers. So how did it all begin? In 1956, Lester Beer Pearson, our Minister of External Affairs, later our Prime Minister, proposed to the United Nations General Assembly to send a multinational group of observers to the Middle East in response to the Suez Crisis. This was Canada's first major involvement in peacekeeping missions. Lester Pearson was later awarded the Nobel Prize for his work with peacekeeping. Let's clarify the role of a peacekeeper. Peacekeepers supervise ceasefires, protect civilians, and keep two sides that are in conflict apart. Historically, peacekeeping has played a significant role in activities of the Canadian Armed Forces, but in past decades has not been as commonly utilized. With the change of government in the most recent federal election, there has been renewed interest about Canada's role in peacekeeping. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has expressed interest in increasing Canada's in UN-supported peacekeeping initiatives that he suggests will make the world more peaceful, safer, and prosperous. I was discussing this topic with two retired members of the Canadian Armed Forces, one who sent his troops away for peacekeeping and one who participated as a peacekeeper. Through talking to them, I learned that the reason for the last lack of peacekeeping in modern times is because of the lack of respect for the United Nations. Further, and on occasion, when sanctioned peacekeeping missions were put into place, the citizens of the countries didn't even know why we were there, and in some cases, didn't want us there. Peacekeeping has proven to be ineffective where the world community has struggled to get consensus on the parameters and scope of what kind of intervention is required. For example, the Rwandan genocide in 1994 when the Tutsis minority were targeted by the Hutus resulted in the deaths of approximately one million Rwandans. History supports that the world community responded much too late and stumbled on debating whether genocide was occurring. Even though there have been a few examples of unsuccessful peacekeeping missions, the vast majority of peacekeeping campaigns have proven to be critical in the areas of the world consumed by conflict. As an illustration of such a success, one should look at the Bosnia and Herzegovina crisis. Canadians played an important role in restructuring the police force and returning law and order to the country. Since the end of the conflict, Bosnia has remained largely peaceful. Other Canadian peacekeeping successes over the past 50 years have included Cyprus, Egypt, Lebanon, and the Western Sahara. However, there are many countries worldwide in a state of civil war who are involved in conflict with other nations where peacekeeping could prove to be valuable. For example, the tribal leaders of the Democratic Republic of the Congo are resorting to child soldiers to maintain dominance of the country. The warlords in Liberia are fighting to control a broken and impoverished country. This, 
In the Central African Republic, the Selikas and anti balakas feel they are protecting their tribes, but are terrorizing the country to extremes. Given the instability of some areas of Africa, it is probably an example of where peacekeeping is needed most. Canada has a long, proud, and distinguished history with peacekeeping. So why is it our responsibility? It is our responsibility as a free nation to guide others into peace. So why is it Canada's job to get involved? Looking back at the, the sandbox scenario, Canada is the stranger watching you and your friend play in peace. Judges.